Hi guys, welcome back to Keith's Garage. Appreciate you coming back and checking out my channel. I'm still seeing a, a lot of stuff online, a lot of people asking questions um, when they have no spark. Trying to start an old car, maybe a res resurrect an old car that's been sitting in a garage for years or in a field, or maybe just the spark just died. And um, a lot of people asking questions about it. And I think it's, it's um, maybe not a bad time to throw together a video, what I do, when I don't have any spark. So let's go through that, see if you can learn something new. I'll, I'll uh, admit I'm not an expert. Um, what I do know works for me, I think. And if I don't know, I just read some more. Stuff's pretty basic. I'm going to work on my 1938 uh, Chrysler today. Use it as an example. The spark's fine. I got no issues. But let's walk through it. Let's pretend there's no spark. And see what we can figure out. All right, let's start with a simple spark plug. You all recognize that. Electricity comes through the center of it and comes out the very tip. And at the tip of the spark plug, there's a gap. You see that gap? The electricity has to come through the center electrode there and arc and jump across this gap here and cross that gap. If you watched my earlier video, we know that a circuit is a circle. So electricity may start at the battery, go through a circuit, and it's going to go back to the other side of the battery. And the, uh, the return path, they call it ground. So when we thread this spark plug into the cylinder head, this whole metal surface here is touching the engine, right? And the engine is part of the frame, it's bolted to the frame, and the engine is ground. So this tip of the spark plug, which is all part of the housing here, this is threaded into ground, this is ground. The spark has to come down the center of this spark plug here, we're calling this a porcelain insulator here. Spark goes right through, the electricity goes through here and jumps to ground. However, that's a pretty good gap there. We've got to cross that gap. In order to clear that gap there and make electricity jump, we need lots of voltage. In a typical 6 volt or 12 volt car, that's not near enough voltage to jump across that gap. So we need to make like 4,000 to 15,000 volts probably, somewhere in that range, to arc across that gap and go to ground. So high voltage, low amperage, but a high voltage spark is going to be a nice whitey blue color. So you're, that's a healthy looking spark if it's got a bluey white color. So we got to get across that gap. So we need lots of voltage to do that. So how do we do that? with a coil. Let's start with a coil. Okay, I'm digging through my spare parts here. I'm dealing with a vintage Mopar, 6 volt 1938 stock system. I'm bringing out the big guns here. We got an old coil. This is a stock coil. It's vintage coil. And most coils today, you know, through the 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, when everyone was using points still, there will be two wires here on each side of the coil and then the one out the center. Um, back in the Mopar flathead days, the coil wire, what you'd have is you'd have electricity coming in this side of the coil, wrapping itself around the windings and coming back out this one, making a circuit. So coming from the battery, going in this side, doing the loops, coming back out this side and going to ground. If you did that, you'd have a complete circle and this coil would probably get hot because you get electricity flowing through it steady non-stop and it can't cool down, it's going to get hot. You've ever heard someone that leaves their key in the on position in the ignition and the coil gets very hot? That will happen if the points are closed because the electricity comes in here through the coil and when the points are closed it can go right to ground so the coil gets hot. At any rate, the old coil here the power came in at the back, right here. 
you had like a sheath a cover on this with a um, a sheath uh, like metal encased wire and that was so you couldn't touch the coil wire and hot start the car I guess maybe and it went over to the key switch so you turn the key switch off on power from the battery goes right in here it comes out here and goes to the points or ground let's just call it ground we'll, we'll draw a simple circuit so power in power out simple coil let's talk about maybe a little bit of coil wiring here I got the big guns out today we got a board all right this board sorry it's as clean as I can get it sorry it's not brand new we're gonna make a drawing with two different colors red and green and red is like like a stop sign like danger okay we're gonna call that high voltage green typical just low voltage isn't gonna hurt you so safe how about go stop why not so over here we have our battery positive negative doesn't really matter which side is positive or negative on this one we're gonna the voltage off of here on this car is six volts it comes off the um, we got positive ground we know what that is we've seen that in our other video that's connected to the car frame that battery post is literally connected to the car frame so the voltage can get to ground there you'll see what happens here. positive comes off here let's call that a switch that's your key switch you turn the key on voltage goes through the key switch remember we got to make a circuit it's going nowhere until it can return path back to ground but electricity comes out of here goes into let's let's draw a coil here and the old Mopar this comes in the back of the coil I showed you that and um, this is the high tension we're gonna call that that should be red that's danger I'll tell you why in a second and then we've got this little one nub on one end that goes to another switch over here we're calling that the point so we'll just make a crude drawing of a switch I guess and that goes to the ground and that's all green right we're gonna call that the primary circuit basic six volts off the battery through the ignition switch to the coil from the coil to the points which are a switch right to ground we have a circle now we have a circuit because this ground here connects with this ground because that's part of the frame just imagine a, a dotted imaginary line from that ground to this ground those are connected so now over here we have a wire that comes off and goes to let's call this a spark plug and it's got a big wide housing on it we drew that and on the tip is a gap boy my drawings are terrible hey tip of the spark plug and there's the gap it's got a cross and that's red because that's that's not let's call this 12,000 volts it's a guesstimate something like that so six volts somehow turns into 12,000 volts so we can arc that gap and make a spark inside of the coil there's a primary winding the water electricity comes from here and loops around oh, a couple times let's just call it like that like a coil of wire and when that electricity goes across there it creates a magnetic field in the center of the core is a metal bar and um, it's got a whole bunch of windings around it tighter windings I think it's about 10 to 1 or something like that or maybe more I don't know 100 to 1 whatever let's just let's just make it simple and say there's 10 windings of the green wire and there's a thousand windings of the red wire so when the points are closed now that switch is gone 
the points are closed, electricity flows through here, goes through the green wire, and goes right to ground, and you just, they're flown at the speed of light. That's when the coil can get hot. If the car's not running, you're sitting there in the keys in the on position, electricity flows through that way, through the coil, and to ground, and then the, the engine's not running at that point, so the coil can get hot if it's working, if the points are closed, which I show you here. Now, we're not gonna get into the ignition, the dwell, the timing, and all that stuff, and the spark, but as you know, as a distributor turns, when the points uh, become op open, the connection to ground is broken over here at the points. Now electricity cannot flow to ground and go through. So what happens is, is the magnetic field we created here in the green wire, just think of it as electricity and a mag mag magnetic field, because when you spin electricity around an iron core, you make a magnet. All of a sudden, these electrons can't flow anymore, and the electronic field here, it collapses and it sinks and it dives and it, 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 through inductance, it jumps into the red coil windings to the iron magnet in the center of this coil. And because you got, like I said, like a, what did I say, 100 to one or whatever the number is of the spring windings, coil windings inside this coil, the electricity collapses into the center and it magnifies it multiple times. And all of a sudden you've got 12,000 volts at the center and it's trying to get to ground and it's gotta go somewhere. It's gonna shoot out of here and it's gonna go to ground right here. It's going to arc across. This is going to represent the engine block, the cylinder head, right? We got a spark plug screwed into it. And that cylinder head is also connected to ground. The whole block is. So the high tension, we're going to call that the secondary circuit, the high voltage, red, because it hurts. Touch a spark plug, grab a spark plug wire when the engine's running, it's gonna hurt, you're gonna get a good little shock. You're not on the six volt side, but you're gonna get it on, you're gonna get 12,000 volts, it's gonna hurt. So now this is going to ground, and it arcs across here, 12,000 volts, and it jumps right through here to the cylinder head and goes to ground. Does that make sense? We have a circuit by taking it from the battery, going through the coil, and the points open up, you get inductance, it jumps across the arc and it goes to ground. So we need lots of spark and volt we need lots of voltage here to create that spark. I'm sorry this is so crude. Um, we're not doing anything fancy with graphics and I'm just a grease monkey at home making things simple. Um, we're not gonna spend hours and days on a graphics program, software program, trying to come up with something better looking than this, but I think you grasp it. This is a very simple one wire from the coil to a spark plug. That one might be, be an example of what you might see on like a lawnmower engine or a snowblower, something with one cylinder. But when you've got six cylinders, you can't have one wire coming off the coil going straight to one spark plug. You, you got six spark plugs, right? So really, that wire, as you know, is we're calling it the coil wire. It comes off of um, the coil and it enters the very center of the distributor cap. It jumps across and goes to the center. Then you got a rotor on there that spins. And then these wires, this wire goes to this spark plug, this wire goes to this spark plug, this wire goes to this spark plug, because we got six spark plugs, right? In theory, it's a six cylinder flathead. So the high voltage secondary circuit, 12,000 volts, I said, comes into the center and it sits right on the very center of the cap of the rotor. I'm going to show you a rotor. Okay, this represents the rotor right there. Center coil wire off the coil to the center. You got six contact points in there, one for each spark plug wire. This is a rotor that sits inside there and it's spinning because it's connected to the distributor shaft and it spins around. If you look at it, right here in the center, there's a little piece of carbon, something, I don't know what it is. 12,000 volts comes through the center off the coil. Hits that, that's touching this right here, the center of the rotor. The rotor's spinning because it's on the distributor shaft, right? Every time it comes in contact 
with a close um, one of these uh, lugs here. That's where the spark plug wire is connected to. Again, the electricity arcs across. It's coming into the center. It's got to jump an arc from this tip right here. This, this is a metal tip. It's got to jump across because there's no contact there. We've got, we've got no contact. So the spark's got to jump across there inside your distributor cap. Come down spark plug wire, jump the gap at the spark plug. Now, when you have gaps like this, electricity has to jump gaps, you get buildup and corrosion, arcing. So it's a good idea when you're doing a tune-up. If this is uh, looking really rough, get rid of it, get a new one. You can clean it up a little bit of piece of emery cloth, maybe or something, a small little file. Just clean that up, get any corrosion off there. Inside the cap as well, clean that up. Keep it clean. The cleaner it looks, the better. The more amps that can jump through it, the more voltage. You want that. The least past path of resistance, the electricity can flow and jump through the ground there on the tip of the spark plug, you're going to get a bigger, stronger spark. The stronger the spark, the bigger and more powerful the combustion process. I've called it an explosion before. It's not really an explosion. It's combustion when the air-fuel mixture inside the cylinder catches on fire and violently combusts. Lots of voltage. We need that. Keep this clean. The wires, these are in rough shape and um, they're touching each other. Maybe sparks can actually jump through them. They'll arc through. We're talking 12,000 volts. They'll take, like I said before, my shortcut. The party's back at the battery and that's where all the electrons want to be. They don't want to be out here doing stuff. They're lazy. They're going to take the shortest path back to the battery. If they can jump another wire and get to the battery quicker, they're going to take it. So these wires here, anywhere there's a short, You've got to clean that up. New wires will help. Spark plugs. You're going to get a gap build up on your spark plug too. Sorry, corrosion because of that gap. Remember I said the high uh, volts, voltage, 12,000 volts, arcs across the spark plug right on the tip there. Spark plugs become corroded. Clean them up. Keep that tip clean. Keep the cap clean. The rotor clean. Good wires. This wire here to the core. Coil. Very important that's clean. Everything. Keep your contacts clean, dirt, oil free, and tight. You're going to get a better spark. There is one more thing that I want to point out here that we're missing so far in the ignition system is our friend, the condenser. This is just basically one wire. What does it do? It's a condenser. It's a very important piece of the ignition system. This is part of the primary ignition system because as we said, six volts goes through the coil and goes to the points and goes to ground. Okay, we said this is a set of points here. That switch, it opens and closes mechanically by the cam inside the distributor rotor. A condenser, think of it as a little, almost like a little gas tank. It just holds stuff. It holds electricity. Temporarily, it holds it. So electricity goes in there and it stores it there temporarily, basically. So this is wired in uh, parallel across the points here. We'll just make a little, I don't know what the sign is for a condenser. I can't remember the symbol. But it's wired across the points. Because when the points open and close, the electricity wants to arc at the points. We don't want it to arc at the points, then we get buildup. It happens anyways. You gotta file your points and clean them. And as they file away, I think they're made of tungsten. Um, you've got to clean them up. But this condenser, when the points open and the spark stops, it needs somewhere to go because it's trying to, it's getting a path and it wants to jump as the points slowly open. And we're talking like nanoseconds here as they open, the electricity will still jump. There's enough here that it'll just jump a little gap and it'll start to pick away at the points and corrode them and cause buildup and problems. And that's happening so many times per second at the speed of light. So we wire in this little condenser. In the condenser, when the, when the spark, sorry, when the points open, the electricity, the electrons flow into the condenser briefly and they sit there and they wait. And then when the points close, the electricity flows back. So what it does, it suppresses the spark from arcing across the points. That condenser is an important piece. The other thing I wanted to just tell you about capacitors is there's only one wire because that's the completed circuit. You need a positive and a negative, right? Like to make a circuit. 
there's one wire going in, but the housing itself is grounded. This metal housing sits in this clip that screws down to your breaker plate. That's the grounding circuit for the capacitor or condenser. This is called a condenser, but it's also a capacitor. This one says made in Mexico on it. The other thing that this condenser does is when the points just start to open a little bit there that I mentioned, the voltage rushes into here and is stored in this capacitor. It'll store lots of voltage. And as it just keeps piling in the, the six volts from the uh, ignition switch, when the points start to open, it builds up and stores, like I said, like a gas tank. Now you might have 250 volts sitting in here. And when the points open and the voltage goes in here, that causes a, the, the coil to collapse way quicker. It just, it, it gets this obstruction and, just, uh, and it just collapses. And the primary collapses into the secondaries and you get a nice, tight, sharp, clean jolt of electricity right in there at 15,000 or so volts. So you need this. I think we owe it to Nikolai Tesla who uh, he discovered it and documented it to get our 12,000 or so volts to make a nice blue bright spark that looks like a little piece of lightning. Um, when a condenser fails you start to get backfiring and things you don't get a good clean sharp connection or disconnection of the points without a condenser. So the other thing a condenser can do, because it stores electricity, when the points close it helps it flood in there and quickly go back to ground. The faster we can get that electrical current built up in the coil, the primary side of the coil, the better. So this little bit of storage of electricity, it helps build up the coil quicker. And think about yourself going down the highway at, I don't know, it's a flathead, so let's call it 2500 RPM. 2500 revolutions per minute this coil has to open its points have to open and close and collapse this magnetic field I don't even have a calculator to figure that out it's thousands of thousands hundred thousand times a minute because you got to do it for every spark plug so 2600 rpm represents one spark plug firing 2600 times per minute times that by six spark plugs I don't have the calculator on me, I'm going to figure it out. That's how often this coil has to um, create a magnetic field and collapse. If it's not able to keep up and do it fast enough, we're not going to have good spark. We're going to have a weak spark. Um, the spark, they don't have enough time to soak up and, and make that, we need all the voltage we can get in the primary. So when it collapses, we get 12,000 volts out of it. It'll vary at various engine speeds, of course. It seems to me that that would, would uh, you'd have less time for voltage. You'd probably get a little bit of weaker spark at 2600 RPM versus 1000 RPM. This spark plug gap right here, that's important. You want to gap your plugs properly. It's too wide and the spark, you've only got, however, whoever designed the ignition system Probably Delco, Remy, and the engineers at Chrysler, they work together, I guess, Compass Assistant that works for the car. But this one needs 12,000 volts to jump that arc and make a nice blue spark there. What if you your gap's too wide? I don't have my red pen on me, but now your gap's, let's just way down there like that. If it can't jump it, there's not enough, you can't get more voltage than 12,000. That's all designed to do because of the number of coil wires inside the coil there. It won't fire. It can't jump across there. So make sure your spark plugs are gapped properly too. That's important. Clean them and gap them. I think people are getting bored looking at a marker board. We need to look, we came here to look at nuts and bolts and cars and vintage Mopars, right? Not a dry board. Here's my coil. Here's the 12,000 volts that goes right into the center distributor cap. One wire. On the primary coil, right? The six volts from the ignition goes into the primary windings and comes out right here. This wire, this goes right to your points. And the points open and close at the precise exact time that they need to to get you the most efficient spark that you can get out of an engine this old. And then you adjust your timing, you're adjusting when that spark happens. But every time the points open and close, the electricity here goes to ground, right? 
So this wire has to be in, it is so vital that it is in excellent condition. It is clean, the connections are tight. You cannot have frayed wires here. Where it goes into the side of your distributor, go down and look at the side of your distributor. There's a, usually an isolator down there, a piece of rubber, because the distributor is bolted to the engine block, so there's a shortcut to go to ground. The electricity can take a shortcut and go right to the engine without going through the points. It's going to, and you're gonna have an engine that misfires and doesn't wanna run with a dam, or maybe you won't have any spark at all, because the electricity is not making it to the points. I'm gonna show you that. We're looking at a really bad example of a wire that comes from the coil, right there on the coil, travels along, and goes into your distributor. Condenser, we talked about that. There's your points opening and closing over here. See them? The condenser is wired across them. Let's get that out of the way. Look at this. This is brutal. There's cars out there that look like this. I've seen them. This piece of metal here cannot be touching the housing of the distributor because the spark needs to go through it and right to the points. If it arcs across here and goes to ground right here, it's going back to the battery, you don't have any control. The points are doing nothing. The electricity, the, the uh, six volt primary is taking a shortcut to ground. You got no spark. It's not gonna happen. So, the electricity in a good car comes through here, through here, and look at this little jumper wire. What's it doing? It's in bad shape too. Look at it. It's not doing a very good job. The electricity is supposed to go across there and go to the points. Connect to the points here. The points open and close. That's our switch we talked about, right? There they are, opening and closing. Think about that. It just blows my mind how fast that's turning. When you're ripping down the highway and the electricity has the ability to charge up the coil jump across arc here and make a spark so many times per second it's unbelievable this is a, a breaker plate it's called that everything sits on it rotates this one's old and seized um, it rotates and that's why this wire needs to be this one especially needs to be soft and in good shape because this whole plate actually rotates and that wire is moving. That's your vacuum that's moving that plate. Your vacuum is moving that plate actually. Right here. The rod connected to your vacuum right here, diaphragm. You have enough vacuum, it pulls the plate and rotates the breaker plate. And this whole, this moves here. This wire has, is flexing. That's a piss poor wire. It's a special wire. You can't just use any old piece of wire because it'll just as it's moving, it'll break down and collapse. Then the wire goes to ground, the electricity goes to ground, sorry, and then you don't have a spark. There's another reason. No spark, if this is touching ground. <laughs> Very little to no spark when the wire looks that bad. It's corroded, replace that wire. Condenser's not hooked up, but man, it's gonna be brutal. You're gonna have no control. It's gonna be jumping and arcing at will. Keep that in mind. Okay, I found another breaker plate here that sits in a distributor. Here's your wire comes in. Here's an example of that wire flexing. That's your breaker plate moving there. So your vacuum advance is moving that as needed. It's moving like this all the time. There's a bearing in the center of it there. See the little wire moving? You make your own wire and stick it in there, it's probably gonna fail. Look at these wires. They gotta be in, in way better shape. That's connected right to the base of the points there, where I just dropped my points on my fender. This breaker plate and points is, um, this actually came out of my 38 Plymouth. This is a early 38, they use this style. See where you adjust it here? You adjust the screw, the height, and you're adjusting your gap there. Think about those, look at those points. They're in terrible shape. See how they're not square? Those are worn. Think about the voltage jumping across there, arcing out. 
condenser is going to help that. It's going to stop the arcing. Still going to wear, but I don't know, probably a hundred times slower wear. And if you didn't, if you didn't have a condenser, I don't, I don't, you can't get a good clean cut off spark if you don't have a condenser. It's just not going to work. Here's a modern set of points. <laughs> they're still old, but they're better than the old ones that were in my uh, my 38 when I bought the car. I just showed you a second ago. These ones are adjustable here. You adjust that screw and you basically open this or close it for dwell. Set your points timing. Your points, sorry. Your spark timing. Um, see how that's nice, smooth, clean, square surfaces across the points there as they open and close? You want that to be clean. When points are brand new, they're nice and square across there. These ones actually got a little bit of use on them. See the arcing? I think it still happens. These are low hour. Still decent. Keep them as spares. So as points wear, you're not going to get a nice, clean, even square surface. When you just go in there and you set that with a feeler gauge, you've got a high spot. And it necessarily does not represent the right timing. You get you're gonna you're gonna set the gap with uh, uh so you use a matchbook cover or you use a whatever eighteen thou feeler gauge. It's not accurate. It's it's accurate when the points are new. After they get worn, they're not squared off anymore. Your gauge is your feeler gauge is not going to be accurate. And um, as you adjust these, you're adjusting the dwell time. The dwell time is the amount of time that the points are closed and when the points are closed we know what happens the electricity flows through them to ground and allows the coil to charge up the primary coil that's dwell time and then they open and uh, whatever's in the center of the coil or sorry the primary circuit of the coil collapses and drops into the secondary and creates 12,000 volts you need this to be right you need like I think my car uh, my 38 Chrysler here it says that the dwell time should be about, it's measured in degrees of um, rotor turns, uh, the dwell cam on the distributor cap. My dwell meter tells me that these should, for I think it's 38 degrees of turning. The, the distributor shaft turns 38 degrees when these are closed and they open again. And that 38 degrees is what you're setting here when you adjust your points gap. And if it's not accurate and you're getting 22 degrees dwell or something like that, that represents the amount of time in milliseconds that your primary coil has time to build up and create enough electricity in the primary coil. So when the coil collapses, you get a bright blue spark. If you don't, if this is set incorrectly and your gap is too short here, um, it's too tight, you get less dwell time, you're going to have a weaker spark. You don't have time for the coil to build up and make all that electricity. So you get a nice, clean 12,000 volts. So dwell is important. Okay, I want to illustrate what happens here if your gap is set too wide. We know that affects your dwell time, but it could also affect your spark completely. You could have no spark. As I turn the distributor, you'll notice right in this area here, there's a hexagon here, six sides. As I spin it, it's a ramp, and it opens this lever right here. And look, the points are opening. There they are, wide open. Then boom, they close again. And they're open. That is set very high. Look at the gap in there on the points. Can you see that? If that's way too wide. What happens if you set it too wide and the points don't close? Say, say you're screwing around, you don't, you're learning and you don't really kind of know what you're doing. You're trying, right? I get it. We've all been there. And your gap is set too wide. Now if you look in there, watch the points. They're not even closing. So points don't close. How do we charge up the primary side of the coil? You're not going to get a spark. So what we're going to do is you're going to open the points there at their maximum opening and you're going to adjust by adjusting this screw here on this particular set of points and you're going to, the spec 
I think is 18 thou when they're new. When they're not new and they're worn, moving that back a little bit, and we're, and we're turning on our car, and we're firing it up with our dwell meter hooked up, and we're watching the dwell. And we're going to adjust this until the dwell reads 38 degrees on my particular car. There's supposed to be a screw right here. It's missing. It locks everything down. Once I set this to the right dwell, right gap here, I set the screw. So there's another reason you may not be getting any spark. This wire is in bad shape. What if it wasn't hooked up? What if it was falling off? What if this wire wasn't hooked up? What if your uh, wire here was loose or broken to your capacitor? That'd be a problem. Your dwell is set way too wide. You're not going to get a spark. There could be electricity all the way right to here. Measure six volts. Then you don't get any spark at all. Well, if that's not going to close, how are you going to build up your coil? This video is getting to be pretty long. Uh, I could go on for probably another half an hour. I think I'll cut this up into two sections. Uh, part one, you're watching now. Come back in a couple days, I'll upload part two. I hope you're learning something and enjoying it. Uh, I just don't need you to sit down for two hours to get through how to troubleshoot for no spark on one long video. So let's make it two videos. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. If you like what you see, come back in a couple days, you're going to see part two. Thanks.